April 2nd. Mm -hmm. Let to call the meeting of the Canandaigua Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Uh, we will start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and that will have a moment of silence for our own forces. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just starting off here, we do have, I guess we have one person here on, the, on Zoom. Um, with our procedure for Zoom uh, attendees, uh, we ask them to stay muted so they are uh, acknowledged and wish to uh, make any statements to the uh, rest of the uh, meetings. Um, okay, we'll be starting public hearings. Our routine is that we will open our public hearing um, to each request for a variance um, and I'll have the uh, applicants uh, present their case of why they wish to have a variance granted. Um, there'll be discussion among the uh, uh, applicant and the board and then uh, there'll be a time at which anybody in the uh, audience can or including uh, online can uh, make any comments or or uh, uh, statements. Uh, once we've had that exchange of information, uh, we will generally ask that uh, if it's okay with the applicant that the, uh, nice, uh, the public hearing be closed. If that's the case, we have 62 days to make the decision on, our, um, on the applicant uh, application, but uh, we can't really go with the decision tonight. Um, okay, uh, first one is uh, Mega Engineering uh, for uh, Lisa Roberts and Larry Joslin, uh, owners of the property at 3611 County Road 16, requesting a rear setbacks area, area variance of 7.3 feet, 22.7 feet rear setback from 30 required. There you go. You'd like to present your request? Can you just give me a moment? I'll just mess up this board. Tony, do you want me to pull up the color plan as well? The one on the bottom? Uh -huh. You certainly could. Okay. If you could just identify yourself. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Uh, can you hear me just fine? Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Sintera. I'm a project engineer with Mohara Engineering, representing the project applicants, uh, Angie and Brian Joslin, who have joined us via Zoom, uh, for the project at 3611 County Road 16, or in Lake like Road. Just wanted to give a brief overview of the project and before diving into the requested variance uh, and then ultimately turning the conversation back to the board members for any comments, questions, or concerns they might have. Um, given that Brian and Ange Angie are present via Zoom tonight, uh, if you do have any questions for the project applicants, uh, make sure to direct them towards them. Uh, as I said before, the project is located at 3611 County Road 16. Project site is located between the eastern right way of that road and Canandaigua Lake. Uh, the lot itself is zoned residential lake district, RLD, and falls under the zoning criteria for lots less than 10,000 square feet. Specifically, the lot itself um, has several constraints. Uh, it is very small uh, at about 3,300 square feet, total area between the right of way of County Road. 16 and Canandaigua Lakes mean high water. As such, um, based off of the zoning criteria for setbacks, there really is no buildable area on the lot. The lot itself 
was previously developed. Uh, there's a single family home on the site, uh, as well as a porch, uh, and a deck in the rear yard. The project's intent is to tear down this existing single family home and rebuild it uh, while balancing the needs of our applicants with those RLD zoning requirements and existing non conformities on the site. Specifically, what's being requested tonight is the rear or lake setback from the second floor overhang of the home. <coughs> with respect to the project's review so far, we have uh, been given some preliminary feedback from the town uh, and our officials, uh, namely Sean Bonchak and Chris Jensen. Uh, we've worked with extensively since early May. Uh, there has been uh, a period of compromise earlier on in the project um, when our applicant uh, had proposed a layout that would include a building height variance, several covered variances, uh, for building lot coverage, uh, and because they wanted a created driveway extension that would be considered as lot coverage, uh, as well as the rear like setback variants that we're requesting tonight. Ultimately, uh, following the feedback from the town, uh, we went back to the applicant uh, and worked out a compromised site plan that reduced the requested variances. Other review uh, has been done by the Environmental Conservation Board, whose only real, real comment was with respect to the use of native vegetation in the rear yard. Um, there is a, a pretty preliminary conceptual landscape and plan showing uh, shrubs and dwarf trees that would be located in the rear yard where there are none right now. Um, the intent in providing additional landscape in, in that region is to soften the, the appearance of the proposed home from Canandaigua Lake in essence, to better meet the shoreline development guidelines outlined by the town of Canandaigua. So with respect to the rear setback variants, uh, I provided copies of drawings to you uh, are laid out. Uh, it shows the differences between the uh, dimensions and separation between certain corners of by the northeast region of the new home, as well as the existing home, to the property line taken at Mean High Water Canandaigua Lake. You can see the variation there. Uh, ultimately, uh, with the encroachment of the second floor overhang, is the 22.7 feet that is being requested. That being said, in our opinion, uh, we feel that this rear setback variance, uh, albeit worsened, does balance with the need to remove the existing porch, which encroaches within the West Lake Road. And in doing so, the existing building and lot coverages on the site uh, will not be worsened either. Uh, they will be reduced slightly. Uh, you can see this outlined in more detail in the table that's provided on our drawing C3 along with other data for the building plan. With respect to the hardships with the lot, uh, it goes without saying, but the lot itself is very small. Um, at 3,300 square feet, there really isn't a lot of maneuvering that could take place with the footprint. Um, and it's the intent to match the majority of that existing footprint with the new one. Although it's not necessarily considered a hardship, what should be factored in is the floodplain development guidelines with respect to Canandaigua Lake, where the existing structure has a bottom floor elevation that would not meet uh, that requirement, namely being above the base flood elevation of Canandaigua Lake. With the proposed home, uh, we would meet that criteria, and at that point, there's the need to access the rear lake yard, which uh, as we show in our drawing C1, would be accomplished through the use of some steps leading out towards the yard. Even with this factor, then uh, ingress and egress from the proposed home and movement between floors, uh, we've managed to keep the building height for this proposed single family home below the 25 foot max building height that the Comic Canada has for this size. RLB lots. 
No, I think I'm, I'm Wendy with Mahar Engineering. I think, I guess, the biggest uh, graphic that kind of tells the story is the blue is the proposed, and obviously the red is existing. So we are making improvements on non conformities with the exception of what they're so back. So we, we have worked really hard to try to fit a good balance, like Tony said, uh, between the proposed needs of the client versus the requirements. Did you guys get any letters from any neighbors or anything? No. Not that we received. Um, the only additional comments we have received were from Don Havens with CLCSD, just regarding some notes for the renovated sewer lateral. I've had several calls from the owner to the more older gentleman. I think it's a lot. Um, either north or the south, I can't remember, but um, in support of the project, um, said he spoke with the applicant and they here on the same side. Um, said that I think they rent it out now and that he's never had any issues with their entire. And he also had a variance for something, and um, he understands the nature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're pretty tight. Yeah. They're not, not yeah. much wiggle yeah. on there. So. Yeah. We're we're aligned pretty much with yeah. the neighbors. So moving it will get the board front porch and the um, also the little corner of the house out of the right of way. Yes, sir. That's correct. And with the proposed house layout, uh, there would be no roof overhangs. Um, so from an aerial appearance, setbacks from even the sides would appear to be better. Are you aware of any decks on the top of houses? I know there's a number of decks on boat houses. So I've only seen them on boat houses. Yeah. On the upper deck? Yeah, there's a few of them. Well, there are actually two second. Porches or yeah, whatever. I didn't see any of the top. Mm -hmm. Only on the top of the, the blue, the blue one across the road, it's on the west side. Um, that's a recently remodeled property. I think that has a two story like a porch with a roof over the top. Um, Westwood? I think so, sure. Because I was admiring the uh, ceiling. They have a wooden ceiling and the ceiling oh, fan. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, would there could be, wrong. be any restrictions with what they could do up there on the deck? That's the question. Um, I mean, um, the wall, sidewalls themselves are right at 29.9 feet, so we would assume there's no real additional form right. to do up there that would raise that higher up. I'm not sure they're aware of that. Right. That's there's no, no permanent structures above the 25 feet. I think the landscaping will come under the purview. I think of the planning board. Um, I think put some pushers up on the deck. Soften it a little bit, perhaps. Okay. Um, it was. Uh, Recommended for refusal by the Ontario County Planning Board, so we would need to the majority and pass that. Uh, anything more you have? No, I think uh, I, I would just like to stress that um, our applicant, uh, as well as the town of Canandaigua officials, um, their input's been very valuable in terms of the approach to this project and Island back what was originally proposed, which uh, certainly was excessive with the number of variances that would have resulted. Are there any comments from the uh, audience here or from the applicants on Zoom? Yes, um, Mr. Zasso, nice to meet you all. I, I think Tony covered most of it, but I, I did want to mention that 
you know, I, I tried other means to, you know, we don't want to rent out the house anymore. We want it just full time for family because it's my grandfather's house. And um, we attempted to um, refurbish the inside and just gut it, but there's so many structural issues inside that the contractors don't really want to touch a remodel. So I um, didn't want to have to go to these lengths, but I, I don't see any other way to the situation in there. It floods a lot because right now we're not putting the Tony, we're not even in the right zone for the floodplain. I don't know the proper terminology, I apologize, but so our, our house floods a lot. But it needs to be raised for that purpose as well. So, if I should take all that into consideration, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, I live. Identify yourself, please. I'm, I'm Rich Michaels. I live next door okay. to the south. Okay. And we just had our house all redone uh, right. about a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. So we have no problem with this whatsoever. I think it actually would uh, enhance the area and make life a lot better for everybody. You're the house directly 30, to the south? 3615? Yep. Okay. The one that was just re redone. Here. Yeah, yep. you guys, I think you were in for a variance request. Maybe. I was, yes. Yeah. And we did get it granted. Yep. All right. This is uh, Tom Lund. I'm Tom Lund. I live next door to the north. Okay. And I... So we didn't need a letter from either one of oh, you. Tom. <laughs> we didn't need a letter from either one of you. You were here. No, we showed up. No, right perfect. Here. <laughs> uh, but um, I have no objections to it. They're very good neighbors. Uh, they have been renting the property up until now. Uh, with this improvement or total reconstruction, um, they are not going to rent anymore. And that makes me happy. That makes Mr. Michaels happy. Um, I've lived there long enough to know that somewhere along the line, the town rezoned those properties that are all on posted stamp plots, mine included, riches included. And uh, so if you want to do anything, you've got to have variances. There's no clean deals. So um, it's my opinion that um, I, I, I can ask them, but I, my understanding is they're not changing the footprint at all. And the house next door to me, to the north, back a few years ago, um, they were granted a whole series of variances, the biggest one being 28 and a half feet on the height. Um, they're staying under the 25 feet, so I don't see any reason why uh, this plan couldn't be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, that, so that it's not in the same footprint, correct? Or is it, it's just, it's shifting? I just want to say. I don't know. I, I, uh, that's my understanding I'm, was it's the same, they're not increasing the footprint. Okay. Yeah, not increase, but as an are you, you're not shifting anything. No, okay. um, it's just actually, improving the so front. The blue is the new footprint. Right. The outline of the red is the existing. Okay, footprint. got it. So you can see we're we're making it. So technically, it's better. Than it's what it was, except for so. the rear setback, right. which is like the second story overhang. So got it. Um, and that's you know we needed access for stairways inside, so it really eats up a lot of space for the living areas, right. and just to make. Okay. I just wanted to clarify for, for yeah. yeah, but the front porch is different, right? That's Correct. that's be, taken completely off. So, so technically, the footprint is slightly well, slightly, area. slightly smaller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the same position. Yeah, that's kind of just for perspective. How many square feet will the final product be? Actually, with respect to the home. Approximately like 1,200 to 1,250 square feet, not including a roof overhang, um, which there is not. Any other questions from the board? 
Um, are you uh, comfortable with our discussion and what you presented? Uh, if you are, we could close the public hearing, uh, after which we can take, take no further uh, information from you. But, uh, we would have uh, 62 days to make a decision. Jeff will do it the same night. Okay, All right, we'll close the public hearing. Okay, the next one is Richard Kimberly Gray, owner's property of 4959 Highland Beach Drive, requesting a side setback area variance of 4.0 feet when 8 feet is required. The location of a generator next to the existing home. Sure. Well, sure. Um, Kim Gray, um, my husband is supposed to be here too, but I don't think he's going to make it. Um, in between, we just tore down and rebuilt our property of 4959. And um, the way that the house, we had to get a variance for the way the house um, was positioned down a lot because everybody's house is built to the, to the north. The person to the south of us, theirs is built to the north. The person to the north of us, theirs is built to the south. So we were kind of crunched in the middle. Um, and we would like to put a generator in the, um, on the north, north side of the, our house. And it's just a little bit too tight on the lot line to um, ask for power. I have pictures if you want to see of what it would look like. Yeah, sure. So it looks like you're putting it next to the, the air conditioner? Yeah. yeah. And the um, person to the north of us, their generator is on the same, they would be on the same the, Okay. Yeah. You did provide a picture showing if you put it where you didn't need a variance of the least out in the middle of a small front yard. It would be <laughs> on the middle of the, the road, roadside yard. We'd have to put pilings in front of it to keep clouds from hitting it people from backing into it, it just would not be um, very pretty. <laughs> yeah. I guess that would be the only other way you could do it without a variance. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear the neighbors, air conditioning or generator? Or um, we anything? hear it when it tests. Yeah. Um, it's fine. It's once a week. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we could maybe could sink it. We could do them yeah. back to back or at the same time. Yeah, yeah. We asked uh, the neighbor to the north of us, north of us, um, and he doesn't. He did not mind at all if we put it there in between the two houses. You're on letters. He did send in a letter. That is okay. Yeah, we did have a letter. Um, okay. Neighbor letter. Mm -hmm. Bob Bailey. Okay. Bob, this neighbor? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, so that's and uh, county go through. Yeah. Any questions that the board has for the applicant? Any questions from, uh, from the uh, audience here or remotely? They're gone. I think we just have this to start <laughs> No. Are you comfortable with what you presented? No. Uh, yes, the only thing I could add is I actually took pictures between the two houses of what everything looks like now and where the air conditioning kind of would go if anybody's interested in seeing it. Probably most of us have visited the site. Yeah. Okay. No further. Uh, We'll go ahead and close the public hearing. We have 62 days to make a decision. We'll generally make a decision uh, tonight. Um, so you're welcome to stay around for a discussion with the board has. Uh, or we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, the next uh, public hearing is Liberty Restaurant Development. Uh, requesting a that's, uh, 3225 State Route uh, 364, requesting a front setback area variance of 20.4 feet uh, when uh, 100 feet required. I'm sorry, 79.6 feet setback when 100 feet required. So it's a 20.4 foot variance. Good evening, uh, Brett Steenberg. Um, I'm the engineer for the applicant uh, Liberty Restaurant um, and their proposal for a variance. Uh, the existing parcel uh, is occupied by a former financial institution. I believe it changed use a couple uses a couple of times uh, when I was with the um, the previous planning meeting. Um, they had talked about some different uses. Um, the applicant is proposing to uh, construct a fast food restaurant, Popeye's fast food restaurant, in the location of the existing um, existing building. Uh, it's the, the restaurant itself um, will sit uh, will sit back uh, seventy nine point uh, six um, yeah seventy nine point six feet uh, from the state highway when one hundred feet is required. Um, the existing financial institution is set back 78.8 feet. So we're actually moving the building back about eight tenths of a feet out of foot. And the, the reason, it, you know, looking at this site and looking at different iterations uh, when we started, um, started working on the concepts, um, you can pick up maybe uh, a few additional feet um, shifting the building to the west, uh, the applicant um, and, and, and did not, you know, is not really in favor of making that that change um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, between where you see the the queue for the drive-through aisle uh, there is, and the existing parking lot to the west of there is actually a very uh, nice landscape berms, uh, large trees, um, and it, it was it was imperative that, that we try to try to maintain that because I do think it actually offers um, offers some aesthetic value to you know, if you're sitting at the intersection um, where you're not looking over the, the sea of parking at Roseland Center. Um, it kind of offers that green space buffer. So we really didn't want to impact that. Um, that being said, if we did move the building further to the west, um, we could go with what would be more of a traditional um, fast food drive-through design, um, which is where your your vehicles stack alongside your curb line, uh, similar to what you have, I think, at McDonald's and um, Starbucks and, and Arby's, um, where they stack along the curb line and you've got your parking on the outbound side of the, usually uh, angled one way, on the outbound side of that drive-through lane and, and drive-through around. Um, the applicant, whenever possible, is uh, vehemently opposed to that because they like to separate the drive-through traffic and the pedestrian traffic. When people stop and come to the site, you know, we, we would like them to be able to get out of their car, walk into the facility, and, and it, it's even exemplified uh, even more when you start looking at um, uh, accessible parking spaces and accessible aisles and, and getting to the accessible ramp. I've seen multiple times at fast food restaurants where the accessible ramp crosses through the drive through and somebody um, who, who needs to actually uh, be able to get through those cars and get to the ramp actually can't get to it because it's blocked by a car until the drive through queue moves. So then whenever possible, they try to move that, that queue to the outbound side and, and separate the, the, the two traffic. And the, this, this design um, actually is, is almost what we would consider our ideal design for that. Um, because it really does, it does a great job in separating, um, separating those two, uh, those two uses. And it also, this design provides a, a good amount of stacking in the drive through queue. Nobody wants to see the drive through queue backing up out into the parking lot and packing traffic. In some cases, it even backs out onto roads and locations. In this particular case, it would never be able to do that because of the, the, the internal uh, design of the site. Um, but it, it does, this, this does provide excellent vehicle, um, vehicle circulation through the site um, uh, for both drive-through and, um, and uh, 
sit down patrons uh, while still maintaining um, that existing landscape buffer. The footprint um, that you see, not only the building, but the building and the asphalt uh, parking in the drive lanes um, that you see on this, on this plan um, actually are all within the existing paved area, even shrinking uh, the paved area to the east of the site a little bit. Um, with the exception of uh, just to the south as it comes around that side, uh, it, it does encroach into some green space. But overall, we're actually reducing the impervious area on the parcel, uh, which we feel is, is, is good as well um, from what is, is there existing. And I, I think from a environmental standpoint, to be able to maintain within that paved and, and hardscaped area, um, the, this site design and site development is a plus. So going through the, the um, variance uh, criteria and, and questions, um, will, the, will the variance uh, create a desirable change in character uh, of the neighborhood or detriment? Um, it's an existing situ uh, situation. The bank is actually eight tenths of a foot closer and is actually a larger footprint on this site. This, this building is actually quite a bit smaller, um, especially the frontage um, along uh, New York State uh, 5 and 20 um, is, is a shorter frontage of the building compared to what the, the existing bank bank is there now. It, the, um, and also we're able to maintain that mature landscaping um, in those trees for the most part throughout the site, uh, which we feel is a positive for the development um, with, with the acceptance of this variance. Um, given the configuration of the parcel, it is impossible uh, to achieve the intent of this site design without a variance. If looking at the 100 foot setback line, and you can see it running through that, through the site there, um, in order to achieve that, uh, you would probably in maintain that 100 foot, you would have to um, rotate and turn the building, um, which always would, would put your either drive through lane or pick up lane on the state highway side of, of the building, which um, instead of the front of the building and the, the glazed area itself, we feel that um, from a, from a um, aesthetic standpoint, that the, that having the front of the building facing um, the state highway is preferable as well. Um, the variance is 20.4%. Uh, we don't feel it's substantial um, because the existing uh, building is a, actually a 21.2% variance from the, from the um, required 100 foot setback. Um, again, it will not have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or district. Uh, for most of the reasons I've, I've already explained. Um, and this is fairly consistent with the corridor uh, along, uh, along uh, routes five and 20. Um, the variance is not self-created. The, the, um, the configuration of the parcel um, and the, obviously uh, you can see that from the existing building that's there with the configuration of the parcel and the 100 foot step back off the state highway. Um, it, it's, it makes it very difficult to uh, construct a, a, a building in that location. And, and I do want to note that that uh, right away boundary is actually a pretty good distance as well off of um, off the edge of pavement, I believe, of, of New York State's 5 and 20, um, which is what that 100 foot um, uh, requirement is set off of. As you can see with the, the yellow line there, you've actually got a good um, green belt uh, between the right of way boundary and the existing edge of pavement where the vehicles are traveling. Um, within that is the uh, is multi purpose or, or a walking path um, and actually a row of uh, landscape trees as well. Be happy to open it up to the board and answer any questions you may have. So you're going to reduce the, the amount of asphalt? Yeah, there's a, there's a slight reduction in the amount of asphalt uh, from the existing condition as well. It looks like we're getting rid of the second um, entrance almost. Yes, yeah, so we're getting rid of the second entrance into the, it's from a, from a, um, 
traffic standpoint, tra yeah. circulation standpoint. Actually, in, in, in my opinion, it, it helps with the overall uh, traffic circulation through the um, retail center as well because it, it puts all of the vehicles entering and exiting the site onto that loop road on the outbound side. So you're not trying to force them uh, in, again where the pedestrians are walking through the stores from the front of the parking areas. What is your seating inside? 24 seats. 24 is, and I, how many parking spots? Is that about 30 or something? Uh, like that? 22. 22 parking 22. Spots. Any other questions? Anybody? Any questions from the audience? Oh, I have a question. Yes. Where, where is the sign going to be located? The, the main. We're, we're not actually having a freestanding sign. It will just be right on sign. the building. I mean, on are you going to have? What's the requirement for that? Uh, um, we had. Well, that'll be next month. You're, you're going to see the that's up with the advanced signage. Okay. Okay. We were working through the signage when we submitted this, yeah. and um, we'll be here next month for it. Well, I worked in this building twice over the. 20 year history that I've, I've been in the financial services business. So. It's actually a nice building. That's it's, uh, you can get rid of it. I'm right. You can get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, we should open up the, the one end, just take money, right? Like, <laughs> there's no reason for it. So, yeah. That's it. It's much as sense. <laughs> financial statement. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. It was fun. Anything else? Are you comfortable with your presentation and we can close the uh, public hearing? Absolutely. Thank you. We okay. have 62 days to uh, make our decision, but typically we'll make our decision uh, tonight. Welcome to stay around. And, uh, that's it for public hearing. Correct. Okay. Um, the board discussion. All right. Uh, starting in with the first one, that's 3611 County Road 16. I don't have an issue. I, yeah, I'm sorry. That's right, go ahead. I've, for them personally, they mentioned they would be improving their flooding issue, which was makes sense for them, but that would probably, you know, uh, be for the greater good. And I like that uh, the right of way encroachment uh, being eliminated. I think that's a, that's a positive. So. If everything else was, uh, uh, you know, was uh, everything came out even, um, I think the world's still a better place if we stay out of the, uh, the right of way. Anyone else? You don't see an awful lot against this to support of the neighbors. The, right. There's not a lot of other choices. It's pretty much within the footprint. And it would be nice so to tight. back. I parked next to it. So yeah. Neighbors, right? It's not much room there. Not at all. Well, plus they're reducing the overhangs too, right? So that'll be a little. Correct. Applicant is requesting area variance rear setback of 22.7 feet when 30 feet is required. A 7.3 rear setback variance required. Shall the applicant be granted a 7.3 rear setback variance? Bob Pillar? Yes. Dave Emery? Yes. Kelly LaVoy? Yes. Chip Salem? Yes. Shannon Chevy? Yes. Okay, um, this will be based. Uh, the um, benefit to the applicant, applicant does outweigh the uh, detriment to the neighborhood, uh, and therefore the variance is granted. Uh, it's based upon the facts that are presented at the public hearing at night um, and in the drawings that we'll receive for um, The uh, certainly the lot. There's a lot of constraints on what one can do here, and I think I think they've done a nice job of working with the with the town to really reduce the number of variances. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it's a minimal variance compared to what's there now. Um, we improve safety by increasing the space alongside of the road. Um, 
certainly no objection from the neighbors. No. <laughs> it's certainly within the character of the neighborhood. Yeah. So. Anything else, anybody? I just made a note that the ECB comments were minor. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, I think it's rare that we get one with such a minimal request, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In that area. <laughs> Okay, ready to vote? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I feel we've already voted, sorry. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, we have the reason. I was ready to vote on the other one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Next one. Um, Richard and Kimberly Gray, owners at uh, 4959 Island View Drive. Site set back at area variance of 4.0 feet. Um, square, the location of the generator. You had mentioned that uh, to avoid the, uh, the variance, uh, <laughs> the other placement would have been, uh, you know, uh, actually, you know, silly. Did you see it? Did yeah. you see yeah. the picture? Yeah. The pictures were very the cool for this one. one. Yeah, there you go. With having the paint on the ground or whatever <laughs> they did great. it, that was you useful. Everybody do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that was fun. No, I have no issue. Okay. All the questions. Sorry. Applicant is requesting area variance side setback of four feet and eight feet is the minimum. Four foot side setback variance required. Shall the applicant be granted a four foot side setback area variance? Bob Hilliard. Yes. Dave Emery. Yes. Kelly Leboy. Yes. Chip Salem. Yes. Shannon Chevier. Yes. Okay, uh, the uh, benefit to the applicant does outweigh the detriment to the neighborhood. Uh, therefore, the variance is granted. Uh, the board's decision is based on the facts presented tonight and with the uh, materials sent in through the zoning uh, office. Um, I mean, this is a minimal variance, uh, not really substantial from what allowed by the downtown code uh, placement of the generator to avoid any air variance uh, really is unreasonable in terms of appearance and functionality of the property. There's no concerns about the noise because the other generator for the neighbor is right next to it, right? right? So that's also something we can know. And it really doesn't change the character of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You can also do it on the Okay. We're on a roll here. <laughs> Let's keep it going. <laughs> okay. The um, Liberty Restaurants development. No, that's on this. Kelly's pretty well already sold this one. I know, right? <laughs> like, nah, just go. No, I mean, honestly, it literally has been a bank for over 20 years. Yeah. And I mean, I was in there in 2000, and it was that way then, and there's never been a bank, and I, I don't work for a bank, so if that tells you anything, it hasn't been a bank for over 20 years, so. I, I think to me, the, the selling point was the diagonal the line that, that, yes. that went through where you wouldn't have to be able to avoid a variance, and I don't see that. This is this is about as minimal yeah. as it could get out of such a well, thing. And it's it technically reducing the yeah, you know. reducing the variance. Of, it's also really improving the traffic flow. Oh, my area. Yeah, that needs um, some work over that. We're yeah. maintaining uh, a lot of the greenery. Yeah. Yeah. And we're uh, a pretty good laboratory for drive-throughs. Uh, you know, <laughs> Tim Horton's uh, Wendy's. Oh, yeah. That yeah. one yeah. gets. Uh, Pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy. Just to that. So uh, this uh, makes uh, it's much more straightforward. You know, it uh, well, makes good sense uh, to uh, <laughs> some of the uh, layouts. Yeah. Anything else? The only question I had is if Popeye is going to affect the chicken barbecue sales that go on. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. Because <laughs> there's one across the street, too, and that doesn't mean anything. Right? <laughs> chicken barbecue is everywhere. Okay. Well, I think that's within our review. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, applicant is requesting area variance front setback of 79.6 feet when 100 feet is the minimum. 20.4 front setback variance is required. Shall the applicant be granted a 20.4 foot or front, front setback area variance? Bob Hilliard? Yes. Dave Emery? Yes. Kelly LeBoy? Yes. Chip Saylor? Yes. Shan Chevy? Yes. Okay. Um, the benefit to the applicant does outweigh the detriment to the neighborhood or community, and therefore the variance is granted. Uh, board's decision is based on the facts as presented during the public hearing uh, tonight and also on previous documents which have been received. Um, the branch will not change the character of the neighborhood. Um, it is not really have an adverse uh, effect on it. In fact, it will improve, yeah. improve the variance That's and effective. improve traffic flow. Uh, it maintains uh, a lot of the uh, greenery and uh, berm areas. And that pavement's all, it's all broken up in the Yeah, it reduces, it really it needs reduces the proverbial mm -hmm. area so well. Mm -hmm. um, conditions, <laughs> which I didn't do on the other two off the end. Oh, yeah. Well, conditions would be uh, as presented tonight, and then uh, it'd have to be uh, started in a year. Mm -hmm. And those conditions would be applicable to the other two as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. thank you. I'd like to, uh, an aside, I, I was on the ordinance committee. We used to have uh, uh, heated discussions about signage. Yeah. So you want to probably do your research uh, uh, with the car dealerships uh, at all down there. It's been uh, it's been uh, lively uh, trying to uh, uh, get on top of that of that issue. So I understood. I mean, I've done a lot of well, I wouldn't say I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of just looking at the signage on the building and the magnitude of it in comparison to other signs and not that we stuff. Um, the issue we're going to have is the quantity of signs versus the size of right. the signs. Yep. I think even, wasn't it TJ Maxx? Mm -hmm. Wasn't mm -hmm. TJ Maxx one of them? So you, that plaza in particular, we've had a couple of people to mark different signs. Uh, you can even look at our history uh, yeah. with that. That's, uh, you know, it's been very interesting. It's it's either the number of signs or total or total square footage with it, but it, it's been uh, it a very, a bit, yeah, and I think right. it has changed yeah, since uh, some of our more contentious uh, ones, but just uh, to give you a heads up. Uh, understood, and, and you know, yeah, and the, the applicant's great, and I'm sure, you know, work with you on something you feel comfortable with, so, you know, they're very receptive to coming into the community and being part of the community, so. I think to awareness of where your comparables are coming from, they can show that they're not Hopewell or you know they're from the town of Canada, you're not the city. Right. As right. Yeah. I, and I, that I, happens a lot just because you're not from here. It's no, I understand that. And actually, that stretch is very small there within is, the town. It um, is. And I did look at those boundaries, and I, I know some. The only reason I included some of the comparables outside of there is more character of neighborhood, Absolutely. rather than. Because the neighborhood doesn't necessarily fall as bounds, but it, it sure. does. Um, and, and no, I, I do understand that, that that's that's a small um, small section there, the mm -hmm. town, town finger you know, mm -hmm. area there. Because being out of the area, it's looking at the boundaries and district right, boundaries. Right, of, right. It's hard it's, to it's, to tell. Yeah, that sometimes. So, mm -hmm. no, I appreciate appreciate all your help, and so John, you've been great. All right. Question for you if you don't mind. Um, next week's mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. right. Do you think an issue if I did that on Zoom? No, no, no. You don't think so? Oh, I, I, ZTA, I like working in person yeah. because, yeah. you know, you can always kind of have to feel like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think about it? What's that? What do you think that's? Yeah, right? I want to know what happened with the ECB meeting. 
Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you sick? Are you sick? Oh, no, I, I just have to. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Uh, that's that's all right. I heard COVID's yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. I just talked to a client today that's in the. He's like, I can't hear like, anything. It's like three, three weeks going yeah, into it. I'm like, really? You awesome. just got it for the first oh, time? I'm like, ever? Yeah. No, that's probably why. Well, <laughs> I think I've had it a couple times already. But so. I know I've had it once. Yeah, the the long, one, I am pretty the sure. long uh, version that they're and learning more about with the COVID, game, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty rugged. Yeah, right. right? So the kids that keeps on giving, whether it's pulmonary, whatever. We were we were in Greece on our second stop, almost two weeks. And we almost three days before I Yeah, last time, happened, the last time it wasn't as long. It definitely was only a few days and I was fine. But I did lose my taste on the second round. Yeah. I came back. Yeah. I tested positive in February, but I've never had any symptoms. Yeah. I, I only even tested myself because my husband got mad. My daughter, had, we're my younger ones. daughter, was kind of like, that, it's, like it's, not it's, it's not a happy story, you know, it doesn't have a happy ending. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people just, you know, they have good ideas. I wish I can admit it. At least a I know people that have been around people and they don't have it around. Or at least they don't think We have five in the house. Mom and dad got it and came down with it. And then my husband was going to go to work on Monday and I told him, you better test. He tested positive. I had tested the day before well, negative, and he oh, got mad. You. He's Sorry. like, what the hell? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, all right. I don't have any other business. No okay. requests for rehearing. Yeah. Uh, any referrals from town manager? Yeah. Ordinance committee referrals? Not yet. They're very busy looking at solar. Oh, great. Yep. Great. <clears throat> uh, they have a laundry list. I mean, it's very long. Yeah. Solar is a big deal. Solar is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, okay. Approval of the minutes of August 16th. I read over them. I didn't see anything. Anybody else? Have I read them. I didn't I'm like, did I really say that? So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody make a motion, please. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Aye. 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 <laughs> I, I did want to know, did you ever meet with? No, I, I did not. Um, John brought up the... I, I knew, I, knew what he, I heard what he said, but I didn't yeah. know there. And so I haven't, uh, and I haven't heard anything from the ACB. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be this letter which is being generated, which goes on. <laughs> well, Kim is a member of the ACB. Oh, okay. And a very active member. Mm -hmm. um, they're both series are there. I do. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, uh, so I, they're doing good work, and I think they they're looking at they have a memo. That's really uh, uh, finalizing on Friday. Yeah, it'll be finalized. I mean, I think with some of these things and structuring our um, responses, if they're having, we need to be more, you know, just organized in terms of saying, you know, this would be. I I would suggest I'm sorry I I would I would suggest when we have one of those uh, early uh, outs if Chris wants to give us an in service I like to go to meetings and see things but I don't want to be, I'm not representing ECB I'm out right. I'm doing or I mean uh, ZBA right. I I'm on my own doing that but I don't know if everybody understands that or what we need to say to people. That we, you know, as individuals, we can do these things, but as a member of this body, that's different. And I, you know, uh, and I don't, I don't know if you people feel the same way, but I, I just don't want to be going to a meeting representing right. CBA. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is, and sometimes in order, a lot of like on the, the, the traveling place, uh, right. that. You know, it's really a little controversial. Mm -hmm. um, but I think something like that, you can't necessarily, you know, have to, you don't have to go along with the ECB. I mean, what we were looking at was the placement of the house. 
that doesn't have anything to do really with a lot of the uh, landscaping. And so, but we can make recommendations to the planning board as for part of our approval for them to look at such and such and try to minimize removal of vegetation or whatever. And I think we can make some, rec some recommendations like that. Well, I don't, so I mean, with that particular case, I mean, I think what my feedback was, there was a few members that probably would have liked us to deny the whole thing. Right. I mean, that's just, and when we were having our conversation during, you know, John, John was there too, and, and, you know, we were really having a conversation about, you know, do we deny it or do we, I mean, this is what Kevin Mulvaney says, and this is what, you know, so we were taking all the information and I, you know, we're kind of damned if we do, damned if we don't. Yeah, like, well, approach, I mean, that's so. the way it's going to be, yeah. I, I remember it like that. And yeah. Kevin Olvaney carries a lot of weight. Oh, yeah, by and far. Based on what he said, he was uh, kind of on the fence. Yeah. And uh, so that that made it, you know. They uh, said that was the best placement, right? I mean, yeah. if they, they could have placed it elsewhere and made just a giant mess down there, or do we, you know, and, you know, one of the comments that John said was it doesn't have to do with the size of the house, really, it's about the water flow. Right? And that's kind of what we're looking and, at. And the other thing you learn too yeah. is that whether something's alive or not, the root system underneath is what holds the banks together. Right. And whether it's alive or not, and whether it's the kind of tree that bothers some people or whatever, but but the uh, you've got to have something holding those banks, uh, you know, together. Uh, and um. It is what it is, and and it's less than perfect what we. Uh, had, but I thought it was uh, it was doable, and it, it, as I understood, it, and maybe somebody could be more persuasive. Well, and that's you know, and like that the, the plantings and stuff. I mean, some of them, the stuff that was down there is, is already invasive, and they wanted to remove it anyway. Right. So I mean, so you know, we like I said, it was like a it was a well, toss up. Start getting rid of all invasive species. We're gonna have right, right. <laughs> well, exactly. well, 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 to Dave's, to Dave's <laughs> point, yeah. though. Yep. Yeah. But I was you, say, you made a so comment saying, look, if we don't want parcels like these, then why are they available? Or why do people buy them? Or why do, you know, I mean, we should, right? I mean, that was kind of your point was. Well, mm, all right. Can I go into another comment that I that I have? And I'm just interested more in your opinion. You guys have been on the zoning board longer than I have. Doug is pushing, and I maybe it's done, this agriculture overlay district for the town. Mm -hmm. and. I don't know where the I don't know if they can even vote, they have enough members to even vote on it or is it done? They had a public hearing on it the last board meeting on the fifteenth. Yeah, and and the my only question was is of course they won't have to do any PDRs anymore because there won't be any more development the way that they've it's set a, this up. It's a fairly small area. It's a huge area. It's a percentage of the town. Put it up on the board. It's a big chunk of you know. It's a lot of land. Anything over seven and a half acres. And my question was from the zoning perspective, is it subject to variance? It, they basically carte blanche through that. You must have it. I have it. The you know, I'm not asking you to do it now. No, but I can I, get that if you want to go get the map. I, I've have the map, I just don't have it with me. But my question is that I think it's it's difficult. One thing I, I do like about the zoning part of thing is that we can look at each and every different property and evaluate whether or not it, you know, this should apply. The way this overlay thing is set up, they're not going to, they're not, they don't want any water, they don't want any sewer, they don't want any utilities to go in areas within these areas. I, and maybe they should see how big an area this is because it's, it's a lot of the town. It was all the way down past Cheshire. It was all the way up, all, all, the, all that area from Michigan, County Road 30, County Road 32, all that, and then all the way to the other side of town. So I don't know how you can say it's a small part of the town. What it says is, I mean, it, it, any parcel that's over seven acres that is requested for subdivision that needs water and sewer has to have town board approval for that extension. Does that it's really extend from in, it, part it, of the conversation we had this morning, or when, you know, sort of, but not kind really. Kind of, yeah. right, that there's no capacity, that we don't, that there's no way it would even, there, the ability would be there to have sewer in that area, really, basically, unless a developer really has right. an endless amount of money to provide sewer. 
Yeah, that was a good presentation. Terry Fenton actually gave gave a good presentation. Actually, you know, I wonder if it is, it's visible, right? I mean, yeah, it was. You a guys great, might want to tune yeah, in. Yeah, we had our CSC meeting about the transportation plans. Yeah. yeah. Um, County Road 28 Seward. And Brickyard then, Road. Yeah, and then can I go to Farmington Water? It's Tower. interesting. Yeah, you should I, hear. Oh, well, it's more than interesting if you have a lot of property. Well, but you <laughs> yeah, should hear just the water issues that that they're having. Yeah, already, well, which, the way this thing was presented, what I was seeing right. is that they're going to do everything they can to discourage anybody to put any any water or sewer within this overlay. And it's all it's mm. it's thousands of acres in, in the town. But you're also asking, what are the zoning implications? Yeah, That's is it. it subject to variance? Because right. they right. pretty much, and I don't know that it is. Is it? I know because actually, if right, I mean that wouldn't be. Wouldn't this is, be this is a great way to just prevent any development in the town and have somebody else pay for it. The landowners. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, farming is changing. This is not going to be the same game it is ten years from now. No, I mean, none of it. But it's. I just. I mean, obviously I'm very frustrated because it affects me. And, and the other thing that I do think that's something the town needs to look at, if you're going to have a public hearing, you better find a better way to alert people than, a, than, the, pub, than the newspaper. And I know that's the legal way to do it, but I don't know of anybody that takes a newspaper anymore. I don't. Right. I didn't know about it, and I am on the email list for the town. Right. So we're looking at that, and that's our, our goal for next year, is to meet people where they're at, and that the younger generation is using Twitter and uh, Snapchat, um, emails aren't always the way to go. Nobody reads the newspaper right. anymore. How are we, MailChimp, maybe, how are we going to get notice <laughs> to everybody? Yeah. Well, if you have um, something that, that affects tragic. your own property, if yeah. it affects an, an owner's property, don't you think they should be personally notified? Yeah. I don't know. It seems to me that, you know, when you go ahead and change the zoning law for, for what you own, and you know, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Right. Another battle lost. I won't not, quit really. Yet. not really. Not really. Oh, of yeah. All, it's first gone. of all, I'm not, uh, you just went off on some tangent. <laughs> no. You were I, heated about it, obviously. Well, I'm, certainly yeah. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting on some of the worst. You know, we'll get into the prime soil thing with Doug forever and a day. Yeah. You know, they, they basically, it's like the 50s passing in Regents now. We've just dumbed it all down. That's what they've done to soils. Yeah. They yeah. have. Right. Prime right. soils are any soil that's within 10 miles of a city in the city of Canada. Right. Really? That's what they've done. And that's. Huh. Good so, that. I would love to see somebody make a living off of my 250 acres of prime soil. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, go out there with that. Is that a rock? Is that what? <laughs> Let's go very like clean. Remember Brickyard? Why do you think Brickyard was made where it was? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Start growing solar panels. I can oh, yeah, right. So there you go. <laughs> well, well, I'm hoping they're going to allow it. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get in the brick business. <laughs> no kidding. Okay, anything else? No, I think. Uh, there a motion that we adjourn. All right. We missed the less than an hour, but that's okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty good. Thank you for letting me have my tirade. That's all right. We were, we were uh, genuinely concerned. It does affect the town. Yeah, right? That's a good question. No.